These events happened when I was 9 through 14 years old. I'm 25 now, and female. My family had recently moved into a new home and I loved that house, but I've had the most terrifying paranormal experiences in my life there. It started with little things, like the feeling of being watched to things turning up missing and showing up where I didn't leave them. Later, the TV would turn off or on at random, or the channel would change. One night while I was in my older brother's room watching him play Super Mario Brothers, the strobe light he had went off. It flashed rapidly as me and my brother stared in confusion. I got up and cut it off and sat down not thinking much of it. A few minutes later it went off again. Just unplug it, my brother said getting annoyed. I got up once again and reached for the plug. I stopped and gasped as I saw the light wasn't even plugged into the wall. I turned the light off and threw it in my brother's closet. I should mention that during the summers I would often be home alone as both of my parents and my brother worked during the days. My neighbor would check up on me every now and then, but besides that I was left alone from about 7 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. I'd constantly see dark shadows out of the corner of my eyes and started getting really bad anxiety. One morning I walked into the long hallway that connected three of the rooms and one of the restrooms. At the end of the hallway I saw some dark mass that looked like some kind of messed up dog. It turned its head towards me revealing two large red glowing eyes that pierced through me. I stood frozen with fear until the figure ran into my parents' room. After a few seconds of just standing there in fear, I slowly walked to the end of the hallway and pushed open my parents' door. There was nothing there. Feeling freaked out, I went into the kitchen to make something to eat to calm my nerves. I reached towards the drawer to get a knife. As I pulled the drawer open, the bottom cabinet swung open with so much force that it hit my knee and I fell yelling in pain. What the hell? I was so upset I didn't want to eat anymore. I felt so scared and alone. I decided to take a shower instead. I ran the hot shower and just sat in the tub trying not to cry. Suddenly I felt a hand grab my left shoulder. I felt my heart drop as I reached for my shoulder. Nothing. I turned around. Nothing. I finished my shower and climbed out. As I put my towel on I looked up into the mirror and to my absolute horror written in the steam read, You are not alone. I started crying. I went to my neighbor's house until my parents came home. That weekend my friend Liz spent the night. We stayed up late and after everyone went to sleep we sat in my bed talking about guys in school. Liz was in the middle of a sentence when we heard knocking in the hallway. It sounded like someone was running up and down the hallway banging on the walls. I thought it was my brother trying to scare us, so I got up to tell him off. I grabbed my door and tried to open the door, but it was locked. Did you lock my door? I asked Liz. No, she responded nervously. I unlocked it and opened my door. I turned the hallway light on and looked around. All the other doors in the hall were closed including the one leading to the living room towards my brother's room and the hallway was empty. I closed my door and told Liz there was no one there. I sat back down and we started talking about what it might have been. I was telling her everything I had experienced in the house and she jumped and screamed. What's wrong? I asked. Something just grabbed my shoulder, she yelled. As I was telling her I felt that before, I too felt the familiar grab on my shoulder. I jumped up also and told her we should try to get some sleep. Nothing else happened that night, and needless to say she never spent the night again. Things continued to escalate after that, from hearing voices to the floor creaking at night, and more. I never told anyone because I didn't want to sound crazy. We moved out of that house at the beginning of my freshman year of high school. I live with my boyfriend now about 10 minutes away from my old house. Every time I pass by that house, it still gives me the chills. My name is Matthew, and I'm a 21-year-old EMT that works at a retirement community during the night in case of an emergency. I work from 9pm to 7am, and on the weekends I completely work alone. Other than myself, there is one other EMT who works on nights that I don't. During the nights on the weekdays, we have a security guard who works with us from 10pm to 4am. The other EMT I will call Travis, 
then I will call my security guard Marcus, just for their personal security. One night I had Marcus with me and we were walking the exterior of the community while checking on some of the company vehicles to see if they had been left accidentally unlocked. Marcus was standing closer to the street and was just staring down the road while I pulled on the door handles. Whenever we leave the front desk, we have an iPhone that belongs to the company that we take with us. That way we can still answer any potential calls during the night and respond to life alerts that may come through from some of our residents while we were out doing whatever it may be. I had a couple of vehicles to check on, but before I could finish a phone call comes through on the guard phone. Two different numbers can pop up. If it is one certain number, it would mean that the call was coming from within the community, but if it was another number then it meant that the call was coming from outside of the community. This number was the one that meant that it was coming from within the building, most likely a resident with a question or concern. I answer the phone and give the usual response, front desk this is Matthew. No answer or noise from the other end. I assume that whoever was on the other end of the call simply didn't hear me. When you work in a retirement community, you get used to the odd quirks and mannerisms that come with dealing with them on a regular basis. I answered out on the phone again, but simply just said, Hello? But in a much larger voice, hoping that it would help someone with a hearing problem. Muffle, and then a soft static. I waited a few more seconds and then I figured that it must have been an accident that they called me, so I simply hung up and assumed that they would call again if they needed me, and if it was an emergency they had their life alert necklace with them. Within five seconds of hanging up the phone I get another call that said it was coming from within the community again. I answer, front desk this is Matthew. I hear a soft shuffle. I ask who it is and I get nothing but silence again. Even though there is no noise. I get the feeling that the phone is on speaker. Something about the way the phone static shifts is what I picked up on, and made me feel like I was speaking through speakerphone rather than just the simple receiver. I hang up after getting no response and got slightly irritated that someone could be messing with their phone. Before I put the phone back in my pocket I get another call. I'm flat out annoyed at this point, and ignore my casual and cheery tone when I answer the phone and simply use a flat toned inflection. Front desk it's Matthew more static. I hang up before giving a second response and turn towards Marcus. Hey, we need to head inside and switch the guard phone back to the desk phone so I can see who this is. The guard phone doesn't tell me what room is calling me, but if I go from the guard phone back to the front desk phone, the display tells me what exact room number is calling. After I tell Marcus this, he continues to stare off down the street before nodding his head and agreeing. As we walk away from the vehicles and head back towards the front of the community, my phone continues to ring off the hook from the same number. I get increasingly annoyed with each phone call, while also getting more anxious to find out who it is. When we get about 40 feet away from the vehicles, Marcus leans slightly in and says, I think we are being watched by someone on the corner of the road. He had a big white dog and we stared each other down while you were on the phone. I don't know if I'm overthinking it but I just kept watching him to see if he would try anything. I just nodded my head and glanced back at the corner, to which I saw nobody there, and decided it was nothing. The area we were in had some group homes and condos nearby, so I'm not entirely surprised that someone could be outside about this time. A couple minutes later we reached the front desk again, all the meanwhile I keep getting repeat phone calls on the guard phone. I switch, pressing a few buttons to send the calls from the guard phone back to the front desk. Within seconds the phone lights up and on the display I see, room 2026, and I pick up the phone. Finally having some answer, I regain my calm and answer with my usual friendly demeanor again. Front desk, this is Matthew. I get nothing aside from breathing or fabric friction from last time, and the silence in the background. Slightly disappointed I still didn't get any response. I switched the receiver back to the guard phone and grabbed my key ring and decided to go check out why they kept calling me. I told Marcus that we needed to go check on whoever was calling, and find out why they were calling. After working here for a while you start to know who lives in what room. While walking through the halls and heading to the elevator to get to the second floor, I kept racking my brain to think of who lives in that room, all while the guard phone continues to ring again and again while answering occasionally to see if it was a different resident. It never was. I get to the front door of room 2026, and I knock a few times and state, 
It's the front desk. Is everything okay? No response. The room had a nameplate next to it, which made me believe that someone had resided within there. I wasn't familiar with the name, so I knocked again and stated that if I didn't get a reply that I was going to come inside. I was still receiving phone calls on the guard phone all while being outside the door. I waited 10 seconds before pulling out my master key and unlocking the door. I was unnerved when I opened the door completely. The room was entirely vacant. When you open the door, to the left is a kitchen and a living room, and to the right there was a hallway that had a bathroom, two bedrooms, and a closet. Marcus looked at me with a disturbed expression and said that he would wait outside, as he was too afraid to go in. I took out the guard phone and answered it while I was walking into the room. I still got no response, and I didn't even bother giving my greeting. Marcus let the door close, but not latch. I looked into the living room after switching on a kitchen light, and noticed that there was no landline plugged into the wall. I became increasingly afraid, and more anxious than ever. I stood still for a minute trying to make sense of it before I realized that the phone call had ended. But not by me. I took the phone away from my ear and looked at it, and as I expected it rang again. I answered and walked around the apartment again. I went down the hall. While nearing one of the bedrooms I started hearing more clearly over the phone. The questionable breathing turned into definite breathing. Hello? I said softly and curiously. I actually get what I believe is my first response from the number. It sounded like someone shooting air out of their nose, like when you see something funny on your phone, but instead of laughing you just exhale a little harder. I walk into the first bedroom and after opening the door I get a big rush of cold air. I thought it was weird because the entire apartment only had one air conditioning unit tied to it, but it was obviously colder in this room. I left the door open and stepped inside while listening to the phone for more clues or potential breathing again. Without my knowledge the phone call had ended again. Hovering my thumb where the answering button would be, I waited for it to call again. And it does within 5 seconds. I decided not to answer and just kept looking around the room. I get a cold shiver when I walked deeper inside the room and still didn't see anything, but the temperature feels at least 30 degrees less than what it was in the hallway, and it was oddly static. I can't properly explain it, but I never noticed it until I experienced it. It felt as if the air in the room was stiff and unmoving, as opposed to the air outside or in any other room for that fact, where it would normally be loose and generally normal. I grabbed the closet handle and slid the doors to the side to see if there was a phone or even a plug-in in the closet. There was nothing inside the closet, but after a couple of seconds of leaving the closet open, the phone stopped ringing and the air felt alive again. It still felt really cold, but it became less awkward to breathe it in. After connecting the dots in my head after a few seconds, my legs felt heavy as my spine began shivering with fear, and I sped walked out of the room and slammed the door behind me. Marcus could hear that the phone had suddenly stopped ringing and noticed that I had a stunned look on my face as I told him, go back to the desk. And we both hurried back. I explained to him exactly what had happened, and he began getting just as freaked out as I am. I ignored going to that floor again for the night. To solidify that I wasn't just crazy, I have Mario feel my shirt and hands so that he can notice how cold that room actually was compared to everywhere else I was. We didn't get any phone calls for the rest of the night, and still am a little freaked out that all the calls had ended. Whatever it was, I really hope it doesn't come back to that room again. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you have a story that you would like to submit, make sure you email it to yourmaker6260 at gmail.com. And if you would like to help support the channel, make sure you check out the sponsor button down by the subscribe button. It's a cool new feature that I'm beta testing and it will give you a couple cool perks. I want to give a special shout out to everyone who joined me for my live stream like yesterday or the day before. It was a lot of fun and I plan on doing it probably tomorrow again so we can continue judging the stories so I can get my best of 2017 stories out there. 
I really appreciate everyone who came in and said hello, as well as supported the channel in other ways, whether it be Super Chat or becoming a sponsor. You guys are awesome, and it was a lot of fun for me, and it was something I really think I should do a little more, because it felt nice actually talking to my community. I hope everyone has a great day, and I will catch you in the next video. And just remember to watch your back, because you never know who, or what, is watching. Bad bye.